<laughs> so uh, now that we've uh, talked about kazoos, let's talk about figs. Figs. And Ooh. the bizarre life cycle of figs. It's really weird. It's really weird. It's really, it's really weird. weird. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the fig is one of the first plants cultivated by humans and people have been uh, growing and cultivating figs for over 11,000 years. Damn. That's longer then we've been cultivating cereals. That's wild. That's a lot. That's so long. I didn't think figs were that long. Older than cereals actually is wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Figs are also uh, not typical fruits. They are an example of an infructescence, which is a type of multiple fruit, like a pineapple. So as we can see here, we've got our pineapple on the left and this is at the stage of an inflorescence, which is a cluster of flowers. And then that once those mm. flowers are pollinated, then it becomes an infructescence, which is a cluster of little fruits, which makes up the body of the pineapple. On, on the right, what we can see is a cross section of a fig and very strangely, the flowers that will develop into the fruit of the fig actually line the inside of what's called the synconium, which is actually an enlarged, hollow, fleshy stem um, rather than the actual fruit itself. And so this acts as an accessory fruit, not the true fruit, like a strawberry. Right. Um, and the true fruits form from each of the flowers that line the inside of the fig. So fig, figs are fake fruits. <laughs> yeah, figs are fake fruits. So they have lots of tiny little fruits on the inside, basically. But why? But why? Also, looking at these images, can we can we think of any problems that this might cause having the uh, the flowers on the inside of the fruit? How are the bees gonna do the things that the bees do to plants to flowers? That was, How indeed. That was the essence of my question, but why? <laughs> <laughs> the problem of pollination. How do those flowers get pollinated if they're inside of the fig? And why are they inside the fig? Which takes us to the bizarre life cycle of fig wasps. wasps. It's really weird. This is super exciting. <laughs> and because, yeah. because you know the thing you were asking me before about, you know, why do the ants drink the blood of their own children ants? And there is a reason for that. I googled it afterwards. Reasons? They make sense. There's reasons. There's a reason the figs like this, but it's just just not normal. But it's, it's not just normal. Not normal. <laughs> it's just but not like, normal. It's against God, I'm it's sure against it makes nature. Sense. It's not normal. <laughs> it's just <laughs> So here we have a lovely female fig wasp. And you can tell it's a female because it's got wings. And our female wasp will be carrying pollen from another fig. And at the base of the fig, there is a small opening called an osteole. And figs at the right stage of maturity release scent compounds from that osteole that attract the wasp carrying the pollen. And our female wasp will crawl through the opening, which is so narrow that it'll lose its wings in the process and sometimes even its, even its antenna. And once the wasp has entered, it can't leave again. And the entrance uh, closes over with like sticky sap to prevent more insects from entering. And you can see there's quite, <laughs> there's a few trying to get in there at once. <laughs> Inside our fig, we have a ring of male flowers that s circle the opening, the osteole. And when those mature, they're going to be producing pollen. And the rest of the hollow space inside the fig is lined with female flowers. And the female wasp is here so that she can lay her eggs inside the female flowers. Um, and the wasp does this by pushing its ovipos <laughs> ovipositor, which you can see this little, uh, little spike on its bum, <laughs> pushing it into the style of the flower um, which is like a little thin filament that emerges from the flower and depositing its egg directly into the ovary of the flower. 
So this is the life cycle of the fig wasp. They just they they colonize figs. <laughs> so the figs wouldn't be if the wasps weren't. The wasps wouldn't be if the figs weren't. Yeah, that's that's it. It's good how that happens They're, sometimes, but also a little bit worrying. It's, it's so wild, like this really really specific symbiotic relationship. Yeah. It's weird. It's really weird. So here, here we can see a little diagram of one of the female flowers. So we've got that style there, the little point sticking up and the, the wasp will inject the ovipositor down into the style and inject her, lay the eggs inside the ovary of the flower. So the female flowers in the fig have styles of different lengths. So each one has one style and um, they're all of varying lengths. And the wasp's ovipositor can only reach so far down to lay the eggs into those flowers with short styles. That means that the wasp gets to lay its eggs in some of the flowers while it pollinates all of the other flowers, which will then each develop a seed. So this this is the kind of negotiation between the fig and the wasp. It gets to, you know, lay its eggs in some of the flowers and it pollinates the rest of the flowers for I, the fig. I love this stuff. This is <laughs> the kind of stuff I get excited about. It's not the kind of stuff I know a lot about, but it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> so after the eggs have been laid, in the flowers that the wasp has laid its eggs in, the ovary forms a gall around the developing larva and the wasp larvae develop as the fig does. And after a few weeks, the wingless, sightless male wasps begin to emerge and the male wasps use their strong mandibles to, to chew into the other galls that are still closed and mate with the female wasps that are still inside. Oh. And then by the time our female wasps emerge from their galls, the male flowers of the fig have started to mature. And so the female wasps get covered in pollen from inside the flower, from inside the fig. And then the male wasps chew tunnels through the outer like stem, the outer synconium of the fig. And then they die without ever leaving the fig. Their entire lifespan of the, the male uh, fig wasp is carried out inside the fig. And the females and... just go straight to another fig. <laughs> yeah, and the, well, the female wasp escapes to go find new figs to lay their eggs in. What a life. And the cycle continues. Gender roles are weird. So... The wasp has 48 hours to find and lay eggs in a new fig before it dies. And the fig wasps are known to be able to travel further than any other insect in search of those figs, traveling up to 100 miles in just 48 hours, wow. carrying the pollen all the way from the fig that they've hatched in. 100 miles? That's so far. I don't think I'd be able to travel. travel I couldn't travel 100 miles, 48 hours. No. I can't even imagine it, honestly. I haven't travelled 100 miles in the last Not 12 walking. months. <laughs> Actually, I probably haven't travelled 100 miles in the last 12 months. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow, this fig wasp has really got me beat. <laughs> what I'm wondering now, though, is about the figs that we're eating. Yeah, are we biting into egg like wasp eggs? So that's the big question, isn't it? Wow, that's great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you may have been thinking. <laughs> so these figs that have been host to the full wasp colony are in fact quite unpalatable to humans. But as I said, people have been cultivating figs to make them easier to grow and tastier to eat and with fewer bugs for thousands of years. So we've got quite clever at it. So over time, we've cultivated figs that only contain flowers with those long styles inside the body of the fig so that the female wasp can still enter and pollinate the fig, but can't reach down into them to lay any eggs. So by the time the fruit is ready 
to eat. The lone fig wasp is broken down by the fruit's enzymes and you don't have that mass of broken, like, burst galls and, and larvae and <laughs> all that nastiness. I, um, and, like, tunnels out through the fruit and everything. I think That's I told the story sad. already on this YouTube channel about biting into an apple and getting a maggot. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, like I'm, Im- I'm, I imagine for lots of animals that would just be like bonus, fantastic fruit and protein, great. Mm. Uh, not but, this animal, not this animal. Not to my taste. <laughs> not to my taste. <laughs> so what people do is they they plant this uh, these cultivars of figs that only have those long styles. And then they bring over wild, um, what they call Capri figs, which have the um, like variety of the, you know the the regular wild figs, and so they use those as the like source of um, of fig wasps to come and pollinate our mm. tasty tasty figs. Is that where the word Capri Sun comes from? It's where, it's where all of the great flavour comes from in Capri Suns. You got orange flavour, you got strawberry flavour. And you've got wasp flavour. Spicy. <laughs> Spicy, yeah. <laughs> um, and Aristotle wrote about the cultivated, palatable, fruit-bearing fig that we eat and the wild Capri fig, which they'll they'll um, they'll mm. grow and harvest and then hang in like bags from the fig trees to, you know, be the source of mm. these pollinating fig wasps. So they don't have to travel as far before they reproduce and die. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost it's almost like um, a it's almost like a wasp grenade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like I saw a video of them being like bought and sold and hung in the trees and things and they they're just buying a bag of these little green figs that, you know, obviously don't look like they're gonna taste very nice and they are just swarming <laughs> with with these big wasps. We've also cultivated self-pollinating figs that just need insects to enter them and take pollen from the male flowers to the female mm-hmm. flowers, and so don't need capri figs to breed the specialised fig wasps to bring pollen in from other fig plants. But so that's s- actually like one of the more common um, types of figs that we'll be eating, really. But they still need insects, like to st- yeah. to go in there and die inside the fruit that you're going to eat. Yeah, but more likely just the one and not not a whole colony. <laughs> um, and most most fig species sort of naturally will drop their unripe figs if they're not pollinated. They won't ever ripen. They'll just drop them. Um, but we've also been able to cultivate species that will ripen without being pollinated. And they'll just produce the like crunchy seeds, the, the sort of cr- crunchy seed shells without any seed inside them. Oh. Um, and we can also ripen unpollinated figs by like spraying them with ripening hormones. Right. Um, so we do now have a variety. Of what are ripening for. hormones? I'm not. Well, I wonder if it's like um, ethylene gas. Is it ethylene, ethylene gas? gas? Yeah, Something? is the one for bananas and lots of other fruits. So maybe it's that. Can you get it on the NHS? Is it ethylene? I'm not sure. What it is. <laughs> Well, you can get it from the supermarket. If you put <laughs> bananas near other fruits, they just re- they release loads and loads of ethylene gas, which is that ripening hormone. So if you want to ripen like apples or any other fruits, just like put them put, put them with your bananas. Put next to bananas and bananas are far them and they'll ripen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bonus growth slide. The uh a bonus bonus growth <laughs> slide. <laughs> Bonus fig wasp. The Philotripesis is a parasitic fig wasp, a separate species Mm -hmm. to our lovely pollinating fig wasp. It pierces the synconium of the fig with its ovipositor. And this ovipositor, which you can see, this long little wire. Like a lasso. Not lasso, like a whip. Like a. It looks like Indiana Jones, anyway, is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's thinner than a human hair and it has a serrated tip that is fortified with zinc and it's covered in taste and touch sensors 
And what it does is it buries into the fig, it finds its way through to find the, pol- the, the larvae of the pollinating fig wasp and it lays its eggs on the fig wasps, the, the other fig wasps larvae. And then they will hatch and consume and parasitize the larvae before, um, yeah, before before mating and the female wasps. Like similarly, like the the male wasps will chew a tunnel out through the fig and die, and the female wasps will fly off to go find another fig to tunnel into and lay eggs on <laughs> on other wasps. You've put me right off figs. This entire <laughs> yeah. presentation has made me think, I'm never eating a fig again. If you put a fig newton in front of me, I am going to throw it in your face. Oh, no. Oh, I love them. I love fig rolls. Yeah, enjoy- I love a good fig roll. Mm. Enjoy your wasp. <laughs> enjoy your wasp roll. I actually mm. had fig chutney and cheese on bread for a snack like an hour ago. Mm. And I was thinking about the wasp. <laughs> So, so some... How can you know this information and eat figs? <laughs> I was thinking about it. So apparently, lots of, because because of this, um, lots of vegans won't eat figs because they don't consider it vegan. Because yeah, there's literally like quite likely at least one dead wasp inside it that's just been consumed by the fig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to as a vegan. Starting to question some things. <laughs> but it's just their life cycle. That's just what they do. Why why do we spend so much time talking about insects that do horrible things? <laughs> I just I just love them. I just think they're yeah. great. <laughs> this is a great camp companion episode to the episode about ants. Thank you. Thanks thanks for telling us all of this information, Nat. <laughs> You're welcome, Jen. Very, very kind of you to ruin an entire fruit for the for the rest of us. <laughs> Enjoy your figs. <laughs> figs out. Oh, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got five kazoos. <laughs> oh. Do you want me to go get my kazoos? I can go get my kazoos. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to record this episode or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>